I have to be here. So we are going deeper and learning the basics. Why the basics are important? Yesterday I had a free chat with a pastor living nearby states. She is totally frustrated. She wrote to me that I want a solution of the frustration, anger, reaction, and my guilt. She is a pastor. She is a minister. She is teaching in a church. So we can learn the functional aspects of being a minister. We can learn the functional aspects of being a minister from the formal education. But the technical aspects, how to apply in my life, that is where the Eastern wisdom works. And that is why I, too, I said we need a 360 degree understanding. That was the very first topic that I took up. So we are not only going back, but we are understanding the basics, how to be in that state of <clears throat> peace and meditation. I can use the iPhone. I can use the smartwatch. I am a consumer. But when I know the technical details, one person sitting in an iPhone company knows he is a contributor. One single person becomes a contributor to the entire millions of consumers. Try to understand that. That is where the journey of Eastern wisdom begins. We have to have a functional aspect, we have to have a technical aspect, and after all, I want to know who am I. So I cannot leave on you, who am I? I cannot leave the technical aspects on you that, oh, you tell me who am I. One day you say you are a wonderful person, second day say you are crazy. Finished. <laughs> so that is why the first topic we have covered. Understand that. Even understand, you have to go a little deeper. Oh, there is an instant food. Yes, very, very good. There is an instant food. Can you eat the entire food instantly? Technical aspect. You have to eat bite by bite. Can you eat the entire uh, bowl instantly? So where is the instant food? <laughs> so instant food is outside. Instant food. There's an instant meditation. Come on, instant meditation. So that is why the first topic I covered is the 360 degree understanding. So you have to pay attention to that. And 360 degree understanding works with the Satoguna, Rajoguna, and the Tamoguna. Second aspect, second talk that we discussed, not knowing the fourth desire, one cannot know the real self. So the pastor was saying, you know, I have to pay a lot of money to my dental implant. So that is, I cannot pay the money. That's already a free session. <clears throat> I said, are you ready to attend a free session? You are not a seeker. You will not attend. Now I go to my family and then they make a joke of me. Look at the pastor is frustrated. You see, 360 degree understanding. One. And second is that I don't know. I don't have a desire for peace and happiness. When there is a stress, I want to manage the stress. Oh, I have a lot of stress. So let us do meditation. Yes, it works, it works. But as far as to know my real self and to be in the state of mindfulness or meditation 24 by 7, which is also known as awakening, and a self-knowledge or a self-realization, we have to, we have to follow the journey. If we do not, if we do not <coughs> follow this journey, uh, then uh, 
It's simply, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a laughing point. So once we understand this point, the fourth desire, then comes the next question, whether I should devote my life for the desire fulfillment or whether I should devote my life for the self-fulfillment. What is your thinking? Now we should have a balance of the both. We should have a priority Priority goal is the self-fulfillment, <clears throat> but desire fulfillment, which comes and goes. Desire fulfillment comes and goes. Today you buy one pair of clothes, one pair of shoes, two wear, today you, tomorrow you buy a home, and next day you buy a car. These, they, this will continue in your life. But it should be balanced. I should not, my mind should not be overwhelmed with the desire fulfillment, it should have a priority of the self-fulfillment. That will make you a seeker. If we are not a seeker, nothing is going to happen. Make it a point. Becoming a seeker means that I know the technical aspect. I am relaxed and calm in desire fulfillment. Do you see what I said? I am, I am. Relaxed and calm and desireful. A lot of people talk to me, you know, I have a lot of stress at the job. It means you are not very clear about your self-fulfillment. You have a sense of ego. Ego is ruling that desire fulfillment. <clears throat> and as long as ego is there, the journey of the Eastern wisdom will not take place. Huh? We, we, have a, we have an, if we have an aim of self-knowledge or awakening, nothing is going to happen. Think, think. We are just covering these basic concepts and then we will go back to learning the... Because this, this, this text and this teacher says is addressing to the seekers. So we are also understanding what is going on inside the seeker's head. Seeker's head is not at all concerned about that I have a lot of stress. No, I'm already relaxed. And calm. So desire fulfillment and the self-fulfillment, that is the third topic I picked up uh, maybe two weeks ago. So what the, the, if I should, my mind should always be aware that there is a self-fulfillment. I gave an example of this past. Now I have to pay a three thousand dollar bill to the to my implants, and I cannot pay you. I said you attend the program free, and I'm not ready. I'm not ready. You already know my nature. They are caught up. They are caught up in the delusion, and then nothing happens. Then we say, oh, there is nothing in the Eastern wisdom. There is nothing about the real self. So when I said there should be a balance, the self-fulfillment should be on the priority in my intellect, in my mind, that gives me the mental maturity. And the rest, you know, uh, what is right and good, I should always do in my personal life, in my professional life, in my social life. That is what is taught by our great masters. Be kind to the others, contribute your life to the others, do some service. Huh? Jesus said, love your neighbors. Huh? Love? Oh, there's a phrase you, you might have understood. Love thy neighbors as you love thyself. So that sense of understanding and a mental maturity should come. Well, during the session, I love my neighbors. After the session, I fight with the neighbors. <laughs> See, I'm just talking about technical and the functional aspect of this journey of Eastern wisdom. It is very easy once we understand. So that is one. And then economic, yes, your financial stability should be there. But what does it mean by the financial stability? I must be very clear in line with the self-fulfillment. <clears throat> 
not in line with my ego. If the financial stability moves with my ego, then there is no end. We all know there is no end. Uh, Sam has applied for 100 jobs. I don't know whether out of the 100 he got one or not. So my priority is desire fulfillment. It is not going to work. You are bound to get into this stress again. Do whatever you want to. You may be talking uh, very high. I have a classmate, you know, he always gives a good lecture to me. And I said, okay, it means, you know, so you form an opinion. You form an opinion. You know, he's a good uh, speaker. And day before yesterday, you know, he was talking to me and he said, you know, there is a meeting in the society, in the community. I have to go there. So I'm saying goodbye. Oh, so you are going to speak there. No, no, no. I never speak in a public. but he gives me a good lecture all the time. Very good lecture. Oh, then I said, okay, I have understood now. So you always talk to me when you have to give a lecture because I'm your classmate. You are missing something. I am not aware of it. So, Two things, financial stability, and then comes the desire, desire fulfillment. I have to, I have to categorize. Here is a binding desire and here is an unbinding desire. <clears throat> you fulfill the unbinding desire, there is no problem at all. You want to fulfill the binding desire, it will never be, it will never take place. So you have a balance in your life. This is what, after Buddha left the kingdom for seven years, he returned to the same kingdom and he thought this should be done. I asked my master that why you took, why you took sannyasa. Sannyasa means that why you became monk, why you got initiated. He said, I was 12 years old, I was full. So master told me that, you know, I will put you, uh, here, here are the clothes. Here is the mantra, and I am initiating you. So I accepted it. Do you need that? No, you don't need that. You need to understand these aspects. There should be a balance between the desire fulfillment has three aspects. So, uh, society, what is known as dharma, what is my personal duty? I should fulfill the personal duty. I should have minimum financial security and continue the journey. If you want to, if you have more money in your destiny, you will get it. You continue. And the second part is the desire fulfillment. So desire fulfillment should not be a binding desire. What is binding desire? It results into binge eating. Uh, it results into obsession. It results into craving. So the three desires, they are fulfilled on the basis of self-fulfillment. Then only a person understands, then I have a proper foundation. Then I have a proper foundation to become a seeker. Then I know, you see that once you categorize binding desire, unbinding desire. So your intellect awakens to a sense of detachment and dispassion. Naturally, you need not to worry about it. I'm craving for this food. Is it really necessary? Craving is not necessary. Food is necessary. I can simply say you think like this. Your life will change. But we, we don't have time, you know, we are ever fully busy. Where we are ever fully busy, it points to all the three desire fulfillment. Uh, then we, we have to speak a lie, then we have to speak, you know, that is why the master says uh, the truth is the highest release. We, I need not to. There is no need. 
you know, the, what, what is happening? This is bringing the mental purification just by the intellect, just by understanding this. At the highest level of mental purification. You wake up in the morning, you are relaxed. You lie down on the bed, you are totally relaxed. You start finding... So you have a well-integrated personality. Well-integrated personality. That is what the seeker is. Being a seeker is not detached from the worldly life. How can you find that you have a well-integrated personality unless you live in the world? The world is an opportunity. Family is an opportunity. Husband is an opportunity. Wife is an opportunity. Children are opportunities. Oh, I'm a great spiritual person, Dad. Don't disturb me. You are a crazy person. Are you understanding? Don't disturb me. I'm meditating. You are a craziest person. You have not learned how not to get disturbed wherever you are. Understanding, young guy. All are young for me. So, so, so this, this is what. And then, <clears throat> then we have to look into the one session we took up uh, that I have to move from the emotional dependence to emotional freedom. That will result into enlightenment. So once I understood the desire fulfillment, self-fulfillment, self-fulfillment is on the priority. And... And then I understand that, oh, I have this sense of emotional dependence here. Let me break it. Let me get into the emotional freedom. I should not be upset over the small things. My husband says, my honey says, my friend, no, no, no. My father says, no, my friend says. So that is what we, we have taken that. Uh, so what happens in this journey? I'm talking to you the technical aspect. You have an advanced cognition and the intellect. What is this advanced cognition and intellect? Before you get upset, you recognize here is a cause of being upset and you don't get upset. In any situation. I'm just bringing totally at the intellectual level. Try to understand this. So when we use the word, no, no, do this practice, use this mantra, it has the ability to take your intellect to the intellectual maturity, emotions to the sense of emotional freedom. Uh, what will happen by chanting this mantra? So we become more intelligent. So why? Because our eye is on the desire fulfillment. They are on the priority. And that is why I explained you the story of the pastor. I cannot pay you. I said, don't pay me. Are you ready? Join the group session. Okay, I will see. So why you are talking to me? You don't know. You don't. Why? You don't have, you, we are not very clear about the self-fulfillment and the desire. For <clears throat> Anyhow, I praise her teeth. I said, you have such a wonderful, beautiful teeth. I meant to say that you spend another $3,000 there and continue to have a frustration and anger. <laughs> and you are teaching. Think, think, my friends. So what happens with that intellectual maturity, you raise your level of awareness. You The self-awareness self goes up. And when the self-awareness goes up, then you know Self-awareness can take over, huh? take over the journey of self-discovery. I'm just briefing it, you know. These five different aspects that I discussed have been discussed in three and four different texts. Because we have already been doing this session for a couple of years, 
so it is very easy for you to understand. <clears throat> then we understand the basics, belief in the knowledge discussed by the teacher or passed on to the by the teacher pending inquiry is required. We may be very clear about it. What I said, the belief pending inquiry. Where is the real self? No, start that there is a real self. We will talk about it. Pending inquiry. We are going to inquire. We are not saying that, you know, just have a blind belief. In order to convert that belief into a realization, I have to follow the seven basics, the way I have created. Some masters create, they say six, and some masters say ten. So I just, you know, for my, based on my understanding, I said there should be six or seven aspects of it. First is the Mangala Charan. Mangal means auspicious and charan means behavior. So I should allow my mind to enter into that auspiciousness by thinking, by speaking, and by acting. That is what the Mangala charan is. You'll be surprised. Not a single master, three, more than 3,000 masters, more than 10,000 texts. Not a single teacher has left this basic before the start of the book. At the very beginning of every text they have written, the Mangala Charan is there. Common. There are different ways of doing it that we will talk about it. And then we should be very clear about the fourfold desires that I made it clear. Three desires, desire fulfillment, one is the self-fulfillment, so fourfold desire. But then I have to examine this by Anubandha Chatushtaya. It is known as the fourfold connection. Fourfold connection. I have to find out this fourfold connection in every desire. Went to the dealer yesterday. I said, I'm going to search for leasing the car. So you want to show to the neighbor? I said, not at all, not at all. So the fourfold connection creates a wisdom in your mind that why you are seeking something, for what? So that your mind does not run after the ego. It does not create any sense of delusion. And it prevents us from a lot of stress and suffering in our life. Son, why don't you listen? Get out if you don't listen to me. Oh, that is why you have given birth to your son. Ashok? <laughs> so, fourfold connection corrects your head, corrects your mind and intellect. No, 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 this is not the way I should talk to my son, even if the son doesn't agree with me. I'm just giving an example. Oh, this is not the way I should talk to my boss. This is not the way I should talk to my husband or wife. This is not the way I should talk to my father. Young man. Fourfold connection. You see... You get, it gives an overall 360 degree understanding. Oh, no, I'm talking of self-realization on how I'm dealing with my, my parents and my son and my husband. No, 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 not at all. This is the way. So Anuvan Chatushtaya corrects that. It puts you into the orderliness of the mind. It prevents you from the emotional dependence. A sense of emotional immaturity is there. That is gone. And then the fourth aspect is the what we say, Sadhan Chatushti. I have talked about it, but we will talk in detail in a couple of the sessions before we return to Sadhan Chatushti means that instead of being judgmental, now I, am, I have a discerning intellect. I don't have a judgmental mind 
or judgment. No, I have a discerning intellect. Discerning intellect has four aspects that we will talk. There are four types of the intellect. One intellect is used in the world. Other intellect is used for our own desire fulfillment. Third intellect is used. Well, we'll talk about it. Third, inter third and the fourth intellect is used. Type of the intellect. We have to cultivate that. What is the ultimate result? Naturally, you, you enter into a state of dispassion. You are living in the world, and you are in the state of dispassion. Oh, you enjoy that. What happens? As you follow these steps, your life is going to be beautiful. It becomes calm. It becomes relaxed. It becomes joyful. You have yet to reach to the final stage. But, you know, what happens, you know, in our... We have a... Uh, flag staff, you know, in this in this area where we are living, it's too hot. So as we approach near to the flag staff, we start feeling cold. So as you start reaching to the state of self-realization, you have those feelings. Oh, I feel too much relaxed. Now the goal is near. You get those premonitions. You get those indications. Everything is f falling into the right place. I have a lot of stress. I have learned you for the last three years. Then you are crazy. You have not learned anything. <laughs> you have not learned anything. Don't say that, you know, you have spent three years. No. So, Sazan Chatushtaya has fourfold practices. And after that, one of the most beautiful uh, principle comes the karma yoga. How do you get the stress? How do you get into anxiety and duality and a conflict in your daily life? Tell me. I because I act in my life. How I act? So there are three layers of action. I think about you. I speak about you. I, I speak outside or I speak about you or I act. Thinking, speaking, and acting. Thinking, speaking, and acting. So, but from where this thinking, speaking, and acting comes, it comes from my attitude in the mind. So, by the previous practices, I am very clear about my mental attitude and the mental state by which I need to speak and think and act with others in the world. So, karma yoga is not you are doing a social service. You are doing a social service. Being all social workers are enlightened. <laughs> it means all social workers are enlightened. <laughs> they are doing. Oh, it means you know Bill Gates should be enlightened much before us. Why? Because he donated ninety billion dollars. Tell me. We we don't have a time to think and contemplate like this. Karma yoga starts from the head. It is an intellectual yoga, if I say the karma yoga. I think and speak and act with a particular attitude. With a specific attitude in the mind, I think, speak and act. And if I speak out of that attitude, it starts purifying the mind. You are carefree. You are totally comfortable in your life. You have money, you don't have money. You have the resources, you don't have the resources. Karma Yoga is a very important part of this journey. And once Karma Yoga, you are doing the Karma Yoga, simultaneously this Karma Yoga helps you, your mind, to naturally focus on one existence, and that is the real self. So we, we can check easily that how the progress is made. So these are the six steps, and then what happens? The seventh step is listening, consistent listening and learning the, from the teacher, and you are contemplating and reflecting, then you are doing the meditation, and ultimately, the time comes when you reach to that state.
No, it's all about awareness, you know. It's all about awareness. <laughs> So now see the traditional way to understand it, and then I will go into the technical aspect of understanding. Mangala Charan, I just talked about the first. The traditional way we say that it is a bless, seeking blessing and a purification of the mind at the very beginning of the journey, either through the prayer or through the mantra or through the worship. We will understand. Don't feel that we are entering into a religion by using the word prayer, mantra, and worship. We will define and understand what is this prayer, mantra, and the worship. Why we are doing the mantra, Mangala Charan? Because to make the mind receptive. Another reason that I set in my life an auspicious tone to remove the mental, emotional blocks that enables higher awareness to dawn. That is why. So that is why in Mondays and Thursdays session, what we do? Sarvesham Swastir Bhavatu. That is also a Manglacha. We are setting the tone in the mind. We'll understand clearly, in deeply that how this prayer, worship, and the mantras have been discovered, practiced, and validated. I want to make my mind receptive. <clears throat> the outer agent, including the teacher, cannot, may not help you to make your mind receptive. So you keep on chanting, reciting the mantra, contemplating and reflecting, and then the time comes here, a sense of humility dawns, a receptivity dawns, mental purity dawns, and ultimately you have, your mind is receptive enough to imbibe the teaching. You are setting the tone for auspicious self-inquiry. Are you getting it? We are learning the very basics. Beyond, beyond, beyond what you say, beyond the belief and the blind belief, beyond, you may reject, no, 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 I need not to pray. And No, no. We are using the prayer and the mantra and the worship. This is the reason we will understand. Everything is deeply, clearly explained. So why we do the Mangalacharan? It removes the mental, emotional blocks that obstructs my higher awareness. Simple way. I want to enter into a higher awareness, and if I if I do the mantra in a specific way, if it helps me, let me do it. Be very clear. Anubandh chatushtaya. Four, four, fold connection. We say it is a fourfold connection. So what the fourfold connection does? In the life of a seeker, you it analyzes the competency of a person, whether you are really eligible to treat the path or not. Uh, normally, we say, you know, uh, everyone is eligible to practice. Yes, everyone is eligible to practice meditation. But are you competent enough? Can you check your competency? No, who okay, can? No, Buddha says meditate. It is, it is not going to work that way. So you're analyzing the competency, your own competency, subject matter, objective, and the relationship. That is what the fourfold connection is. Clarity. I should be very clear as a person. Am I a seeker? Am I competent? What are the qualities needed to be competent? We have an orientation. We have an orientation when you enter into any college or before orientation you know you are interviewed i want to do the masters ah oh, have you done bachelor's undergraduate no you are not allowed and we accept it and here we say oh you are a teacher you are saying that i'm not eligible i will learn from some other no you are not going to learn anything 
फोरफोल्ड कनेक्शन कॉम्पिटेंसी फिजिकल मेंटल इमोशनल देन आई शुड बी वेरी क्लियर अबाउट द सब्जेक्ट मैटर वट इज द सब्जेक्ट मैटर वट इज दिस रियल सेल्फ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वट डू यू मीन बाय दिस सेल्फ नॉलेज एट द इंटलेक्चुअल एट द इंटलेक्ट लेवल एट द लेवल ऑफ रियलाइजेशन वट एग्जैक्टली दिस इज वट इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव majority of the people leave this journey because their objective is not clear and their intellect is not very clear the objective of this entire self discovery is self knowledge and awakening is to bring an end to all kinds of suffering once and for all i'm doing meditation i have a lot of stress at the job see the contradiction we have to run uh, so we teachers also have to live in financial stability no no it will happen no worries you do but the fact is fact is otherwise fact is totally different sam you are paying attention to me or to lot of others here so clarify anubandh chatushtaya this four 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 connection clarify it clarifying the lens and the framework for process of gaining the self knowledge or you can say in in that you can define that so anuvan chatushtaya it clarifying the lens and the framework for process of gaining the self knowledge it tells you you have oh i have yet to reach to that state until then i have to continue this practice of meditation so now you are very clear you don't become feel bored of doing the same practice again and again because you know i don't have that level of competency yet hence i have to do this practice this is how this journey and i'm just giving you a deeper insight that how the entire journey of the self discovery has been talked and discussed and taught by our great masters so if you think of the cause and effect of these fourfold connection again i'm being very scientific and rational fortunately i studied uh, physics and chemistry in my undergraduates and i had deep fascination for the physics so that gives me a clarity that can i explain this scientifically so if you think of the cause and effect of the fourfold connection uh you get a structured blueprint of the entire journey and it yields effective achievement of purpose now become become more rational and more scientific so it is a well constructed foundation for self inquiry to be complete so gradually what we are going to do say all these seven basic foundation we will take couple of these foundations in every session we will understand it one after the other and then you will see that how it works so from each basics you have couple of those simple steps if we follow these simple steps then only we reach to a state where we can understand this master easily not only understand as you go on understanding you will continue to start living into that state of meditation again i am repeating once our basics are clear we can continue living into just by listening from the teacher because the basics are clear and you start living into that state of mindfulness which our masters talk about it is awakening and it is realization you start learning from we we'll talk about the other basics later eyes are closed just eyes are closed <clears throat> yeah
in the field of awareness in the field of awareness if i say based on today's understanding your experience sensation comfort and steadiness you are aware of the entire body so when i use the word you it is your mind why mind all experiences takes place in the mind so that mind plays a trick with us it creates an i thought that i thought in the mind we are using as i okay i am aware i experience sensation comfort and steadiness that i thought is there it is an i thought only not more than that like any other thought but we do it to raise our awareness to raise our awareness we are not doing anything be very clear it's not a no, it's a non practice it is Now see the how the mind gives the interpretation are you in the space yes that there is a space all around we are moving the mind in a different dimension even though we we can understand these principles uh, so called with the reasoning but as far as the application is concerned it moves us in a totally different direction we become aware of the space all around okay now so i have a limited space in my room i'm not talking of the uh, space is limited by the by the walls of your room or home can you see the same space inside and outside your room you are being totally objective and then you are aware of the space about you can you be aware of the space as a container not only we as a body but the entire earth the sun the galaxy and the cosmos are present in the container and that container is the space i give an example this is what the insight is we talk about i have a deep insight don't make it so complex i there is a simultaneous awareness of the waves and the water i'm not lost in the water waves i'm not lost in the objective things whether it's a house or a car or a person <clears throat> but i see behind or inside now you can easily understand why your master says we should have a discernment and dispassion we should not be attached we should not have an attachment or aversion to so when we are aware beyond this attachment and aversion we recognize yes there is something more attachment blocks aversion blocks anger blocks kindness permits compassion allows see you have to see the practical aspect look inside your body and become aware of the inner space or the darkness 
what do you mean? The space is everywhere, yes. Can I become aware of the space has no boundary? If the boundary, then space will be limited. And even if there is a boundary, on the other side, there is a space. You see that? One is angry now, and then one says sorry, and one becomes happy. Other side, there is peace and happiness. I'm just giving a glimpse of the higher journey. So this inner space has no boundary. Now, why we are understanding this? We are not practicing. Because we have to leave the objective reality. Where is objective reality? Objective word. What is objective word? Object. What is object? Name and the form. Any object. The moment we say here is, I, my body is an object. House is an object, car is an object, food is an object. So anything which has a name in the form is an objective reality, is always limited. And I'm searching the unlimited, infinite. So we should have some process by which we can leave this objective reality. So we discovered that there is a space all around, inside, outside, top in the bottom, everywhere. Why we are doing it? To raise our level of awareness. So once you have an intellectual conviction that why you are doing it, it helps a great deal. Well, today we are going with the cause and effect. We put the reasoning. So now the goal of it, expanding the mind or understanding that there is one container where the entire objective reality is present. But that container is me. What did you say that container is me? The space is me? No, that container is consciousness. So what happens, you know, now there is a big gap between I told you about the space, you agreed to it, your intellect agreed. Now I replace the container as a consciousness. So all those doubts are removed by consistent listening and learning. And then you recognize that it is only one consciousness. How can I recognize the kind of container if I'm not conscious? So is the consciousness greater than the container that is the space or the space is greater than the container? You know the answer. Oh, so that consciousness is the knower of the space that has to be greater. So the fact is that everything contains in the consciousness. Yes, everything. From the consciousness, we had an idea of the space as a container, and in that space, everything is contained. How can you say, I recognize it here and now. I don't need a laboratory to prove it. And now being carefree in a different dimension, there is a consciousness, there is a space, and then we have the thoughts in the mind, the thoughts and feeling and emotions in the mind. And if you want to go down to the thought, feelings and emotions, they create an individuality, which is an I thought, that is an ego, and that ego is me and mine, 
that ego has a body and a form, and from the body and the form, I am related to the people, and from that relationship, I extract pain, anxiety, duality, suffering, and I lost into delusion. Now, go back. So, consciousness first, purely subjective, and then it reflects into the mind. Then mind says there is a space. And then mind recognizes that there is a thought, feeling, and emotions. Oh, yes. You see different gradations. These are different manifestations of the same entity. Now, so what happens? I see the thought. How can I see the thought if there is no space? And how can I be a knower of the thought if there is no consciousness in it? We are not doing anything. We are just putting a knowledge and understanding. And every human being has a right to have the knowledge. How I recognize that there is a thought has entered into the mind and there is no thought. So the point of no thought is a space. Having a thought, still there is a space. In that space, there is a thought. Did you understand? Let me explain it again. There are millions of the birds flying in the sky. When you see the birds, the space does not disappear or does not end. Space continues to be there. But because I see the birds flying in the sky, my focus is on the objective reality that is the thought and I miss that space, but the space is ever present. So, remind me, ask, what do you mean? So, thought comes or no thought is there in the mind, that space continues to be there. That is what I mean. Now, what I have to do? You have to do nothing. You have to recognize there is a thought. Behind the thought, there is a space. There is no thought. There is only the space. Thought keeps on changing. The space does not change. No, no, you proved it logically. No, you, you prove it uh, experientially. At present, you are doing a so-called, you are in a meditation in your room. Whether you are present in the room or you are absent in the room, the room continues to stay. Whether there's a waves in the water or no waves, the water continues to exist. So when I forget, there is no space, only the thoughts, and that thought pertains to attachment and aversion, then there is a delusion, then there is an anxiety, then there is a reaction, then there is a pain, then there is a suffering. Making it very simple. Uh, but it needs to be contemplated, reflected again and again and again and again until the mind settles into this awareness. What is that awareness? Anything that is objective has no Permanency, the thought that is not permanent.
But for the temporary, we need something permanent. For the thought to exist, we need a space. For the house to exist, we need a space. For the waves to exist, we need a water. For a body to exist, we need a consciousness. So when you have the cognition of this fact, what happens? All the time, we move from happiness to happiness. We transition from peace to peace, happiness to happiness, love to love. What is this? Self-fulfillment. I'm just giving a very oversimplified version of it. And if I move from unhappiness to happiness, that is desire fulfillment. So our great masters, awakened masters, used to move always from peace to peace. Transition from happiness to happiness. What do you mean? So, am I doing any action? No. I recognize the action less. Pure consciousness. When I transition from peace to peace, happiness to happiness, love to love, all the time. Not when we are married or divorced. <laughs> That is a lower level of consciousness. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand. Your awareness on the left hand. Lift your both your palms, place it in your eyes, open the eyes inside the palms, know your experiences, and bring the hands down, we'll share our experiences now. How are you, Stephen? Very good. Thank you, sir. Uh, very grateful to you and, and everybody um, in this group. Um, I, I'm, I'm in peace, uh, and I realize that not only is it important to be in peace, it's also important to be the peace. Um, and, and, and that makes it very easy to, to, to be happy and continue to, to, to um, <laughs> be happy because it works with everyone around me. Um, love, love the idea, the concepts of just going back to the fundamentals and, and never forgetting the fundamentals. Um, and today's lesson reminded me of my my first boss that always said just keep it simple stupid you know it was the first acronym that i learned and and it it, it 
always comes back. And, and this journey for me has been always looking at the, the principles that, that the Eastern wisdom is teaching us and to always return to those basic principles because they're the building blocks of everything. Yeah. And, and it's, it's been extremely helpful and, um, it's made, it's made my, um, my, uh, evolution, um, in this journey, um, easier every day. So thank you. As far you, as my eyes closed, just contemplation and reflection on you. the journey that, that this has been. Yes. It's very important that in meditation, we tend to fall into unconsciousness. Oh, you have to follow this step. But when you are doing the contemplation and reflection, you are aware, you are know what you are doing, what is happening. It's very important. And that helps us to uh, move to the higher level of the consciousness and never forget every moment you think, am I making a transition from peace to peace? happiness to happiness, or uh, making a transition from unhappiness to happiness. It means unhappiness is already an agitated state in the mind. And then I'm, if I'm making a transition from unhappiness to happiness, I'm in fact trying to find happiness in the world outside. And that is where we fall into ignorance. Ah, uh, that we will talk later. How are you, David and Jerry? Uh, thank you very much. And, and yes, Stephen, thank you for saying that. Thank you, everybody. The uh, um, the journey is is about all of us sort of progressing through this this journey together and learning from each other. Um, today's lesson for me was very, uh, to Stephen's point, very simple, but very I love the birds in the space and the, the, the object or objectivity analysis <clears throat> is just having those layers. And, and when we get up into the consciousness space, it's just an endless possibility of yeah. peace, happiness, <clears throat> and love. Yeah. So thank you. Very good. Analysis is required. If we don't analyze, we cannot raise our level of awareness. It cannot happen simply by sitting and eyes are closed. So whether your eyes are open or closed, I have to have that perception. I have to look into the waves. At the same time, I should have a simultaneous awareness of the water. Because the wave is affect the water is. Can I really see, can I have the simultaneous awareness of the water and the waves together? I am going there. I am reaching there. That is the reason huh? God is everywhere. I have to experience, I have to have that insight. Without that insight, I cannot have this. How are you, Jerry? Sir, I'm good, thank you. Uh, the meditation was really seamless. And um, the mind unequivocally uh, agreed with every part of your lesson today. And um, the, the way you say peace to peace, love to love, you know, knowledge to knowledge, truth to truth, I, um, I, 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 my mind definitely feels like that, that, that I am complete <laughs> in every way. And then just bring that love to a situation and, and know that nothing changes my completeness, my love, my truth, my peace, and that we all have that. We, we all have that. Beautiful, Jerry. You see that? You know, you prompted my mind to say something more. If I move from peace to peace, again peace, again peace, again peace, means what? It is all pervading. You see, it is all pervading. That is the real self. <laughs> so it's not a, that I have to find it with eyes closed. My master used to laugh at the later years. Oh, you're doing meditation with eyes closed. Why don't you do it with eyes open? 
So we have to break hold of this. I think Ashok knows. Ashok used, master used to say that. But to reach to that state, I have to <laughs> contemplate and continue the journey. How are you, Dennis? Thank you. I was just following you. Thank you. Checking and making sure that my mind has proper understanding of these principles and that it agrees and has no objections yeah. on, on the very subtle uh, levels. And one thing my mind picked up is that I must be mindful enough to prevent the mind moving from happiness to unhappiness. Yes. And, and that's where it will happen <laughs> that I will not have to then move from unhappiness to happiness. Yes, yes. Uh, and you see that uh, he raised a very important point, Dennis. I have be to be mindful not to move my mind from happiness to unhappiness. Now, again, logical analysis, why it happens? Simple answer, ignorance. Simple answer, ignorance. I look at you and I hate you and I look at you and my mind reflects and anger and hesitation. So who caused the anger inside? I move. Well, how come I move from happiness to unhappiness? Are you responsible? Objectivity. I am responsible. I look at my ignorance. That is what you know. He's saying. Oh, thank you very much. You all are sharing, but you have to continue to live into that state also. How are you, Webhav? Uh, thank you, sir. Sir, I'm good. Uh, it's like that in the practice when you're saying there's an I thought, and I am before that I thought, because that very I thought is not present in when I'm speaking. So, and the other thing is that when I see this thing without that I thought, then everything in this world is organized. It's only because of my ego, I feel uh, disoriented and feel like anything, everything has to be organized. Otherwise, it's all peace and calm. Beautiful. I'm so happy that you are sharing your experiences in the form of certain principles, which has already been talked about and discussed by our great masters. That is what the sharing of experiences is. And having said that, be very clear. I am plus I thought. And that I am is consciousness. And then I have an I thought. I cannot have an I thought without the consciousness. I am plus I am, I thought. Where are you? I am here. This is a thought. Plus, I am is before. So what you all said, I have to be mindful. I have to move, transition from. Very good. That's a good understanding. How are you, Terry? Hey, all right. It's good. Like, uh, and the take over, take away one. It's my the consciousness is the um, outermost layer of all, all, all the all the layers yeah. of the container. Yeah. Consciousness is the ultimate reality, and I am the consciousness. Is what the awakening and realization. And that consciousness reflects in the mind. It transitions either from happiness to happiness or it transitions from happiness to unhappiness. In case of ignorance, it transitions from happiness to happiness in case of awakening. <laughs> so when you say I have a problem, basically that means I am consciousness plus I have a body and then body has some discomfort, and then I have a problem. That is ignorance. I'm consciousness. There is no problem.
Yes, Terry. Terry is listening. So, yes, how are you, Sam? <laughs> Good. Um, uh, no, the only thing that I have uh, in addition agreed with what everyone else has been saying is a, a reminder that I had that peace and happiness is different from pleasure and pain. Right? So, I mean, you can be in peace and happiness and have those experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, see, Sam mind is understanding from that point of objective analysis of both. What is happiness? It is a state of consciousness. What is pleasure? It comes in contact with an object. So you can understand in any way. We are very open. Eastern wisdom is open. It is neither a cult, dogma, belief, and conditioning. Wherever, from wherever your mind goes, you can find the same thing. Yes, but once I understand, then I see, I, am I seeking pleasure or am I seeking happiness? <laughs> I have to continue the journey. If I don't continue the journey, then I live in the middle. After, I have understood it, but then I have, to take, I have to take the next step. If I don't take the next step, then I stuck there. Huh? Then I say, oh, there is nothing in the Eastern wisdom. Yes, definitely there is nothing. That is why we have to achieve nothingness. <laughs> there is nothing. <laughs> How are you, Ashok? <laughs> Namaste, sir. Namaste, sir. Uh, sir, I'm uh, in uh, peace and calm and uh, everything is fine. And... Uh, it is a new concept uh, which is which says happiness to happiness. Otherwise, we used to say unhappiness to happiness. Yes. But now it is uh, the things and the real things. Keep peace to peace, happiness to happiness, <laughs> and love to love. That is a uh, yeah. new term for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, that's uh, Ashok. That's not a new concept. That is what my master has taught me, but I have analyzed it in line with these principles. And you have also gone to my master. You have heard him many a times. Only yes. difference that you did not contemplate, I contemplate. Yes. <laughs> that is the only yes. difference. 